This is 3 News Daily. Hello, Northeast Ohio, and welcome to 3 News Daily on this Thursday, January 5th. I'm Stephanie Haney, here with your top stories straight from WKYC.com. And we're starting with a breaking news update for you on Buffalo Bill safety, Damar Hamlin. NFL Network's Ian Rappaport reported today that not only did he open his eyes last night, but we also heard from doctors that he was conscious enough to write on a piece of paper asking the question, who won the game? The Buffalo Bills said that while DeMar is still in critical condition, he's showing remarkable improvement. We hope to learn more about what exactly that means. We do know that his lungs are healing and they say he's making steady progress. We'll continue to update you as we learn more. And we're also learning more about the murder of four students at the University of Idaho today based on unsealed court documents reviewed by NBC News. The documents say that male DNA left on a knife sheath was used to link doctoral student Brian Koberger from Washington State with the killings in November. Police say there were actually two other housemates inside the home at the time of the killings. One roommate who saw him that night described the suspect as wearing black clothing and a mask that covers the person's mouth and nose. She said she didn't recognize the person and stood in frozen shock phase as he walked towards the back sliding glass door. Investigators say they first used video surveillance to connect the quadruple homicide with a white Hyundai Elantra that was driven by Koberker. Then they tracked his movements through his cell phone. Police were able to use the DNA they collected from trash at his family's home in Pennsylvania to make that connection. We'll keep you updated as we learn more. And we continue following the case of missing person Amanda Dean, whose family is still searching for answers five and a half years after her disappearance here in Northeast Ohio. Her case is especially confusing because her mom says they were initially told by law enforcement that Amanda was at a safe house and not missing. Amanda's my youngest child and she was the one I spoiled the most. And um, but she would never do this, and um, we have a close-knit family, and I, I, I'm at loss for where she's at. I, you know, I believed all these years that she was in a safe house or under some type of protection from the Huron County Sheriff's Office. Now, what her mother was referring to about Amanda not doing is not having contact with her family. They have said she was a very family-oriented person. She would be 41 this year, and her family hopes someone out there can help them find her. Our Emma Henderson will have more for us on Amanda's story this evening. And today, tens of thousands of mourners came out for the funeral of former Pope Benedict XVI. Yesterday was the last day for the public to view the former Pope's body, lying in state inside St. Peter's Basilica. Pope Francis provided over the funeral service in St. Peter's Square. Pope Benedict died on Saturday at the age of 95. He was the first Pope in over 600 years to choose retirement, resigning in 2013. Now in health news, a new COVID-19 variant is taking over parts of the country and doctors in our area are keeping a close eye on it. They're bracing for a possible surge, and they spoke with our Bree Buckley, and they say that early data shows a concerning trend. The data that we do have makes it, you know, does suggest that um, it's spreading quickly, more quickly than other variants. While doctors are still waiting to learn more about the newest COVID-19 variant, XBB15, they say early indicators show it's spreading fast, could be more contagious, and is evading immunity more than other Omicron variants. According to CDC data, this variant has risen from 4 to 40 percent of new infections just in December, now causing about 75 percent of new cases in the northeast part of the country. It looks like it will likely be able to bind more with the higher affinity to that ACE2 receptor in the human to cause infection. And also it is likely able to avoid the antibodies that most of us already have from vaccines and or previous infections. Cleveland Clinic head of microbiology, Dr. Daniel Rhodes, says it's still too early to tell if this variant is more deadly or causes more severe sickness, but the data they do have is already causing concern. Even if you've had COVID in the past and even if you've been vaccinated, there's a good chance that you could still catch this new variant. When we see a new variant like this, it's, it's concerning because the timing is concerning. Like we're a lot of hospital systems are pretty exhausted. We just did two really bad peaks from two really bad infections. 
UH pediatric infectious disease specialist Dr. Amy Edwards says RSV cases have significantly dropped and flu cases are going down. But hospitals are bracing for a possible surge following the holidays that could start in the coming days. All of the Omicron variants um, don't seem to elicit very much uh, immunity at all. Um, literally, we're seeing patients get sick weeks you know, two, three, four weeks after having it before. Now, doctors say some protection is better than no protection, so they encourage you to get that latest COVID-19 vaccine booster if you haven't done that yet. 3 News health correspondent Monica Robbins will have more for us on this story this evening. And in more medical news, a ruling from the FDA will allow pharmacies to sell abortion pills for the first time. Pharmacies can start applying to distribute the abortion pill, which can be used up to 10 weeks into a pregnancy. Patients still need a prescription to have access, and the ruling would not apply in states with laws that ban the abortion pill. Our own Brianna Dahlquist is investigating what this means for Ohio. And Governor Mike DeWine and the Ohio Department of Health said in a press conference this morning that Ohio is seeing an epidemic of young people taking up vaping. This is after he vetoed a bill that would have prevented banning vape products. DeWine said the bill passed by Ohio's Congress was not in the public's interest and that medical experts have been warning the public about the dangers of tobacco products on younger people. The bill would make it easier for kids to access vaping products. We have more on this issue on WKYC.com. And in Washington, D.C., it's day three of voting for the Speaker of the House. The seventh round of voting today ended with Republican Kevin McCarthy losing again. And so the voting now continues. Until a speaker is elected, no other business can move forward. That includes swearing in the new members of the 118th Congress in the House of Representatives. All right, before we go, it is officially the end of my year-long journey to see if it pays to play the Powerball Lottery. It all started in January last year when someone won a big prize, and I wondered out loud on What's New with Jay Crawford and Betsy Kling how much money those people had to put in before they got that big payout. Take a look at day one. Week one, here we go. Three dollars down. Let's see if I win anything. Let's see if this makes a dent in my student loans. 51 more weeks to go, if not. I had my rules set. I would spend no more than $3 per week and I'd see if it could really pay to play the Powerball with that kind of an investment. Now I set this limit because it was money I knew I could afford to lose and that is part of gambling responsibly, which is something that I talked about with experts like Mike Buzelli from the Problem Gambling Network of Ohio along the way. Some things we might notice in ourselves or in others would, would be spending more time than we thought we would if we're maybe going to a venue or, or gambling on our phone. And then of course, spending more money than we, we anticipated too. Those are some of the things that you can look for that might be signs of problem gambling. So here's how it panned out for me. In September, I finally won once. I won $200, which was enough to cover my budget. And I did not win again until last night. In my last drawing, I won 12 more dollars. So I won $212. I spent 155 and ended up winning $57 overall. And I just looked into this. That is straight up winnings for me. You don't have to report lottery winnings unless they're over $599. So on my winnings, I won't be taxed since I didn't win more than $600 this year. And so I can say technically it does pay for me to play in this specific instance, but doesn't pay all that much. And the moral of the story here is with responsible gambling, you shouldn't be gambling to pay off any debts, but it sure would have been nice. All right, that's it for your 3 News Daily update today. We'll see you back here tomorrow with more of your top stories from Northeast Ohio.